The last time I had or I looked forward to come into a set was after maybe Prem or Fida. I think it was uh, to this set because... You know sometimes the cliche of scripts finding their actors? I think it was bang on with her. Every day we shot the film, somebody that I knew who would come at the time of backup and say, what were we thinking approaching other actors? <laughs> when he told me Gargi, I think that was uh, something which you know, I remember telling him that, you know, this is probably coming from your heart. He asked Nivin, so his first time director, or no, he said he'd done a film with me already, and uh, Charlie, and I... Ch 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 hey, forgive me, forgive me. <laughs> Hi, Sai. Hello. Hi, Gautam. Hi, Rakshat. Hi. Sai Pulavi and Gautam have watched Charlie last night, and Rakshat oh, oh, oh. watched their film, Gargi, last night. <laughs> so, we'll start with... Uh, <laughs> The one who saw it afresh last night. Your thoughts about Charlie? I uh, wept. I'm pretty sensitive and I'm glad that he screened it for me in a private studio and it wasn't in the theatre. I'm pretty sure my face was swollen by the time I had, we were done watching the film. It was very emotional and uh, I think uh, uh, I could talk more about it but I don't even think we spoke about it because I said, no, I'll talk to you tomorrow and I went <laughs> off. There's this vulnerability and the sensitivity that he's bought the role uh, that I think, you know, generally you think a macho man who looks rugged but you know deep inside he is like a marshmallow. He doesn't want to, uh, you know, let people in right now because he's scared that he might be hurt. That shows that you're weaker than the lot. So, uh, in return when he was trying to care for uh, the for Charlie and for me, I, I don't know, I might sound a little uh, crazy, but when I think of Charlie as a person, I think she's more like a mum. Mm. You know, you sacrifice yourself to make sure uh, your child is okay. So, I felt that Charlie was the mother and she was trying to heal him. And when she delivered the puppy towards the end, I can talk about all that. No? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So when she, it's been more than two yeah, weeks. Yeah, more than two yeah. weeks. So when she delivers the puppy, it looked like, you know, a mother will want to take how many of her births to make sure that the child is safe and fine. So I felt like she's given a part of her to again heal parts of his life that haven't been healed yet. So for me, it, uh, it was very disturbing to watch, uh, you know, her journey and uh, how, um, because she cannot communicate and she's not like us. I don't know what must be running in her head and up to what level she can love and care. And this is the only way in which she can show her love. So imagine how restricted she might feel to, you know, comfort him. Right. So in right. all these ways, I uh, felt very uh, emotional last night. And I don't even think I said all this <laughs> to him yesterday. I let that sink in. So for me, it was uh, a mother trying to uh, you know, take care of her son. And, Eternally. Know, e yeah, even after she's left her body, she wants a part of her to continue to care for Dharma. What did you feel about Charlie? I loved it too. I mean, I'm a huge uh, dog lover myself. In fact, my production house is named after two dogs I had. So, uh, <laughs> I'd seen the first cut, I, I don't remember when, quite some time ago and loved it since then. But then, um, uh, you know, b barring the um, idea that the, the scenes were there for you to connect and emote and, you know, sometimes cry and all that, uh, she actually mentioned her perspective, which she just described to me. And I thought, I, I think that is why Charlie stood out so separately. It was not just an attempt to squeeze the audience right. dry of their emotions. I think in the treatment itself, it was made to look like a mother slash divine goddess form, whatever, you know, both of them interpreted. And I think that's why you connected so much more to it. And I love the fact that, um, it was not shown merely as his pet. They were equals on yeah, some level. Yeah. You know, throughout the film, it didn't feel like a, uh, like a master uh, who has a dog. Pet lovers usually don't feel that way. But, you know, considering that Dharma was new to having a pet around him, it never felt um, any other way for me. I loved it that they had treated both as equals and uh, there were places that she had enough quirks that yeah. drove him nuts and probably she was also thinking this guy is also so weird man i am putting up with him <laughs> and i think they had that whole thing on adu that was that's one of, i've seen all the pet films and then after i think marley and me i stopped watching this you know i just stopped watching 
and uh, then after that i saw only this and i thought it was so refreshing because they they decided to make uh, both of them as sort of parallel tracks in the film you know no, absolutely the way i looked at this film was like as if it was a love story between charlie and dharma yeah yeah you in could some say scenes that. she is the girlfriend he is the boyfriend yeah, and yeah, the yeah. other scene i would like to make a point told that in your yeah. review yeah. and i like i like the madness of the character like <clears throat> you will never convince somebody in real life that you had a pet german shepherd who wanted to see the ocean but here you have charlie who <laughs> wants to see the snow and you have dharma who believes that my woman wants to see this <laughs> okay. exactly you know so that madness i thought was brilliant last night did you sleep after watching garki i slept uh, at 4 <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so we finished the film at 1 so yeah so i was thinking about it for at least 2 3 hours so i i normally can't review a film you know uh, uh, soon after watching it and uh, you know i normally to take one or two days to so that the content sinks in oh, right. and probably because there are a lot of stuff when you you know when you watch the film you enjoy a lot of uh, stuff you would have clapped at few places you would have laughed you would have whistled but by the end of the film the special this film the the climax is so strong that uh, you only take that part of the uh, part home you know the the final uh, thing and the, you you tend to forget rest of the things so when i went home i was i was thinking about the whole more more than thinking about it i was uh, the experience what i had while watching it i was trying to live live there for some time uh, with, a, with a with a blank state of uh, mind uh, but then again you know there is a small pressure of sending okay i need to I say, tell them something at least <laughs> you know <laughs> they shouldn't I and mean, they shouldn't wake up <laughs> for a blank uh, this thing so then i messaged <laughs> uh, both of them uh, and then i spent for some time uh, spent some time more on it and then yeah it slipped off no, i agree because uh, one if if how for how long does the film stay with you after having completed it if that's a measure of how good a film is i think gargi scores big time on that mm. okay. thank you everything about that film is haunting me uh, even now yeah <laughs> i mean i had the same ex- i had the same experience during garuda gamana also uh, oh. probably uh, there are very few films which haunt you you know after you come out of the theater or uh, haunt you for one or two days after the film you have watched the film and uh, probably after ggvv i think this this film has done that no, absolutely so no furthering the mutual admiration uh, discussion yeah. <laughs> one thing that you in 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 the journey of making gargi or otherwise one thing that you admire about uh, sai uh, halfway through the writing and you know the process of starting gargi uh, with 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 we, we initially we had a few others on board and all that and there was one visual that was sort of lurking in my head and you know, somebody wrote it visual as in i'll say it was a thought i i tell him no i, I think i should ask sai pallavi i can so visualize her doing this and you know more than visualize you know something feel right when something's happen and after a point uh, for various reasons um, you know uh, i i had to come out of the other um, you know halfway through other reproductions and all with with other houses and that's when when i had full liberty to do this myself uh, is when actually i through nevin i approached uh, so I, i think it was uh, me covid 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 times like and she said okay please uh, anpunga send me the script and all and i sent it uh, and i think in a week we we had our call due and that was on my birthday coincidentally and i and she called she called and she said so why do you want to tell this story huh just the first question i i don't think there was a hello or maybe there was a <laughs> hello i don't remember but you know I, i haven't seen her speak so i'm only listening i could have interpreted that 10 different ways <laughs> why do you want to tell the story i said <laughs> so i told her i think this is a valid perspective and i want to voice it from this house and not from that house and uh, she actually didn't have very many questions to ask mm. after that she said okay i'll do it because we had uh, you know um, often in the industry you, you hear sometimes artists are picky they take time they know what they want to do so uh, i was glad i didn't have too many experience with with you know act- actors taking time and all that so 
and I didn't know also. I was still a little confused from my first film and all. So the moment she came on board saying that, I was like, okay, I had a lot of confidence. And you know, sometimes the cliche of scripts finding their actors, I think it was bang on with her. Mm. Like every day we shot the film, we had at least at least one AD or one somebody that I knew who would come at the time of backup and say, what were we thinking approaching other actors? <laughs> Look at what this woman is doing. What? Uh, Karam, you can write whatever you want. You can get somebody to spend how much ever they want. But if you don't have an actor delivering that full thing, then it's waste. You don't. Nobody will know what you set out to write or what you set out to achieve and all. If there was one person during the shooting process who wanted to get that character right more than me and my co-writer, it'll be her. Sure. At times, almost problematic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But. <laughs> like student who asks too many questions. If I miss something, I knew she wouldn't. If I just miss the smallest thing that you just walk into the house and you know do this, she'll say, I'm walking from the school, right? So the bag must be on my right side. So I'll do one thing, I'll go inside, I'll keep the bag on the hanger, then we'll which would make the scene so much more organic. It would feel like it's happening in your house. We don't come and stand and deliver a dialogue to your father, right? And and sorry to interrupt, something as simple as the way she sort of wore that earphones, right? Yeah. It's dangling sometimes, it's not aesthetic, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, aesthetically pleasing to yeah. see someone wearing... But it's common, you will see that in every bus. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, uh, that comes and, and from my multiple bus travels. <laughs> that's all in. <laughs> it just, but uh, again, if you if you know how to carry it off only, my writing will make sense. Otherwise, it won't sink. Correct. So that way, it was uh, um, it was spectacular to see Gargi come to life. A quick uh, digression, right? So something like the earphones. Yeah. Uh, and this is a question to you as well. So does thought go into how I'm how, how am I going to plug the earphones and all of that? I have a very different approach to when I do something. I uh, make sure that I know what the director had in his mind when he wrote it, what kind of a character he had uh, yeah. uh, brought to life. If he's got these thoughts, it would have come from a very different plane. And for me to be in sync with that, I need to know his version. I need to take it within myself and then process it and do it my way. So it's just that. And in the beginning of shoot, when we have that right, after that, whatever I do, is just yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, comes off very naturally. So, for me, it wasn't for every scene that I had to think like her and it wasn't hard. It's just that until we cracked that point where you stop being Very soon, it became movie. second nature for her. Yeah. To, uh, like, she would keep correcting me. I don't think Gargi will say this. I'm like, all right, you know, <laughs> you're Gargi, so... Yeah. Yeah. But, you, but you just bang on. So, the only also, the beginning that I had, yeah, yeah. First once you days. get it right, yeah. I think after that everything becomes... Is there a method to arrive at the same point, the director and the uh, artist? I think this will be the second time that I've uh, ever uh, realized something like this because I haven't taken courses or done anything. You know, what I've been doing all these years, after a point you'll try to analyze what is it that, you know, when you're questioned this way over time, you wonder and then you go back home and think, you know, what did I do? And then you start observing. So in that way, this is how, otherwise I don't know whether this is the right way. I think this works well for yeah. me. I'm able to, um, uh, I won't be able to do something that he wants me to do just because he wants me to do it. I need to believe that I'm doing it. Except because if it's an evening call sheet, she gets tired. Yeah. <laughs> then so she it just is, do whatever. <laughs> if it's after 10 o'clock, whatever the director says, even if it's no bad wrong, no revert at all. I, I think most of the directors feel happy <laughs> if we're shooting after also 10. Also, with regards to the earphones, right. actually the script, when we wrote, the earphones had cellophane tape on ah, it. Mm. Because yeah. that's how most of us use. But every day, one ear, one set of earphones with cellophane tape would come. My co-director would think it's an old one. So he would immediately send the RT. Get a new one, director is going to yell. <laughs> so every time I would see one cellophane tape earphone somewhere on the set, but on her it will be brand new ones. I was thinking, okay, maybe I maybe I wrote it wrong. And then last, I'll, my co-director, lesser nane every day replace Martha. I thought you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm still... I'm going to push you further on that, right? Uh, when do you know that, of course, the director will say yes or no, but then when do you take it as, yes, I have arrived at the character um, that the director had envisioned? Like, for instance, 
Sure, you are discussing, you are probing and all of that. I am assuming that's the method to sort of understand the character and in, in this case Gargi. But at what point do you say, okay, now I know what Gar who Gargi is? I've been lucky that I've always done one film at a time. So uh, when I read the script, uh, there's something that pulls you towards the script and you um, as a person have you have a different vision about what life is and how relationships are and all of that. So there will be one connect that you feel and from there it develops, it grows in you over time. So I try to communicate with my director to know whether I'm growing the right way. Mm. And by the time we come to the location when we're, when we're yeah. shooting, before we start shooting, I think I am already the character. But on day one, you know, because of the new set and it takes time for you to sink in, I've always felt that Usually, before I go into the set, I think that I am, I believe that I am the character. But maybe the first day or second day is when, uh, uh, because we've done few scenes and I have some sort of validation that no, I'm getting it right and it feels that way. I think maybe it's the first or the second day that I feel this way. But otherwise, I make sure that I feel that I am the character. Somehow it happens, the films that I've chosen. I've always um, felt like the woman that I play before I walk into the set only. It's not, sorry, yeah. I mean, for us as a team, when we felt that this is who Gargi was, was when we saw her uh, <laughs> walk in the... The first day, oh, there's a sari, and she wore that. Uh, it's an invigilation scene. And that was the first that was thing my you shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All of us were walking on eggshells, because I remember telling my team, look, she's big, she's gonna come. And I, I don't know what she's thinking. She's like, this guy is the writer? Or is the director? Or is the producer also? So I didn't know how it was, how judgments were being arrived at, no? She walked in and she wrote on the board, um, one line. No. So it was a classroom and I had to, uh, there was an exam yes. going on. So generally in my classrooms, we have uh, on a zero is better than a copy in 100. Hmm. You know, you teachers write that to yeah. guilt trip you. <laughs> she wrote that and we knew that, okay. This is what Sometimes you need to feel like you are the teacher. So I take a step to um, try to put the part of me in... Uh, and there is no yes. doubt in you when you are doing that. There is no jittery feeling. There is no cold feet when you are doing that. Like because he didn't tell you to write that. No. Huh. no. She no I, I don't know. I just did it. I don't no, know. No, no. Should I be? <laughs> I after action, after coming into the set, you know, into the radius of where the camera is placed, I've never seen her jittery. Maybe inside the caravan, I don't know. But once it is the set and all, she'll walk around like she's the, she's Gargi and no. The film is on me. Yeah. <laughs> no, I never thought film's on me. I at least know, okay, this is my scene. Oh, one you. thing that you admire about uh, Gautam. Uh, he, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I, I love the fact that he, so the first question that I had asked him, hmm. I wanted to know his intention. I, and I wanted I, to also know how convinced were you with uh, with his reply of why it was important for him to make this. I I don't. I, it was just one answer, and anything other than that, I think I okay. would have had second thoughts. Okay. And it was like walking on thin ice because I uh, think that this film has something more to offer than what is given because it starts because it's real life, and you start you know, going within and uh, inspecting what has happened in your life and others' lives and all of that. So I wanted to know how the director was looking at this subject and just not as something he's written and how he was going to approach this. So I wanted to know what was there in his heart before he started directing it. And if he, he said that, you know, um, some commercial stuff or this is going to be something like this for you or this is what I have in mind, something which wasn't from his heart, which wasn't uh, fancy, I, I think I would have had second thoughts because for me it was from a very, um, I think when you make a film, you're creating something which is going to exist and when you make films which are this delicate and sensitive and which play with human emotions, I think you need to be very careful and you should be in uh, uh, very, um, you should be steady when you do that. You can't uh, waver this way or that way because you don't have one particular way to approach a particular situation, right? So I wanted to know what he had in mind when he did it and I was so happy to know that Okay, so in, in this age and time, you know, and uh, I, I don't know if it is right for me to say, but um, when he mentioned, uh, he said, uh, I, I 
spoke to him and I had asked Nivin. So his first time director, or who no, he said he had done a film with me already, and uh, Charlie and I. Ch 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 <laughs> hey, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, because like, Charlie still running in my head. <laughs> my bad. Um, so I. I said, let's let's assume I made Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> I am not sure. <laughs> so when he said he made Richie, and um, when he spoke, he never took that in like as if, uh, you know, sometimes you want to prove to the world that my second film is going to be this, it's going to be that. He wanted to, this was like uh, from, you know, scratch, you just have experiences from your previous film and he wanted to, He I think he was stronger than he was ever, he's ever been. And I love the fact that he uh, didn't look at it like it was some selfish motive that he had, you know, to prove myself as the director, to put a point across as saying that, see, this is what I'm capable of. His his uh, idea was just that I have a story that I want to say and I think that it is important for me to communicate this at this point of time and I see this happening um, around me so I'd like to uh, bring this forward. So I like the fact that a director was um, uh, vulnerable or maybe uh, open enough to confess how he felt about things and how he felt about his work and all of that. So. Uh, I was very happy that day itself and after we started shooting, I think I, uh, the last time I had or I looked forward to come into a set was after maybe Premum or Fida. I think it was uh, to this set because the whole team was so, um, they had again young blood, everybody would just be there to work and only work, nothing else, you don't even have a second over there and to run a tight ship like this, you need to be a great director and you need to know how you um, segregate things because sometimes when you go inside as the actor when you know that the director is a little doubtful of what is happening you start sensing it and you start panicking right and you start having doubts in whatever you've been asked to do also but with him i i just knew i knew that even our co-director or anybody would know as much as all of us do so it was nice to know that the whole set was working towards something and it was again Thank you guys for the experience. I, every day shooting over there was brilliant. What part of his craft have you, you know, appreciated the most? Uh, in the sense, see, I know him since Uridhar uh, Kanandi released, and probably he's one of the few, uh, uh, you know, filmmakers from who are work, who was working in some other industry who came and spoke to me mm. uh, those days. And I was going through this turmoil of, you know, oh, it didn't work in box office, things like that. So, people when they, uh, you know, whoever appreciated the film, so I was, I was at, at that point, I was considering myself as, okay, probably I didn't do a good film, you know, probably my kind of film is not working. So, I need to, you know, that's when I started uh, opting for other films. And uh, I think Gautam was one who gave me that confidence in a way. Not that, you know, he wanted to be, <laughs> give me confidence, but the way he spoke about the film or uh, to be frank, he is the first, when I wrote Udhidharu Kanandi, I have told you that, you know, I've, I never knew about the structure. Correct. And he came and told me and he divided it to, and, uh, you know, this is actually inside the structure, you know, this is how it is. And I was like, oh, uh, so he is one of those guys who gave me that kind of a confidence during Udhidharu Kanandi uh, time and then he wanted to do uh, Richie and I used to, uh, you know, follow up with what, what's happening. He used to give me updates on uh, Richie once in a while. And uh, so after that film release, I knew that, you know, what uh, he wanted to do and what that film didn't become. So, you know, as a filmmaker, I I know his journey since then. Because if, I, if I'm in his place, as a filmmaker, how would I feel, you know, and uh, what kind of film I would want to do and what kind of uh, commitment I would give to that uh, film. So when he, I think before Gargi also he, he has told me a few, few other scripts which he was working on. But when he told me Gargi, I think that was uh, something which, you know, I remember telling him that, you know, this is probably coming from your heart. Uh, I mean, uh, this is not something which Unidhar Kandante was, you know, okay, uh, you have seen a film, you loved it and, you know, you wanted to recreate it. But a film, whenever a story comes from the heart, that is your true expression, right? right. This is not somebody else's expression now. Uh, and that's when uh, the filmmaker in you, you can see, truly see that on screen. And uh, so, yeah, so, so that's where I, uh, I was very 
uh, I was looking forward to what he's going to create. And then he used to send me a few of the shots also, uh, once in a while. <laughs> of Gargi. Of Gargi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, whenever he liked, uh, uh, liked something, From he used the to... the monitor itself or... He used to record it and uh, send it to me. And uh, so, we have been a uh, huge admirer of hers. <laughs> <laughs> Behind the screen. Yeah. <laughs> I, wait, wait, that's, well, that's the last question. The thing question. is, I don't <laughs> work well with compliments. Generally, when somebody gives me a compliment, I immediately have a shell around me. So, right now, since that time, I mean... You, you can have a shell. <laughs> <laughs> I do have one. We don't care. <laughs> we don't care what shell you have. You know the Kannada scene as well. Yeah. Why, how, why or how do you think Rakshit is unique in the current Kannada scene? I, uh, for many reasons. See, again, like he said, the association goes back to the sole stem that we both liked, I don't know, talking about cinema or writing or whatever. And uh, uh, UK, when, when I saw and we were debating and I was telling him what all I liked about it and all. So, I still remember there was an issue I had with one particular, a big central conflict in, okay. in UK, which sort of uh, drove the story forward, you know. And, uh, you know, it, you call it a point of no return. So, had had that point not happened, you would have just gone to uh, another way. So, I had, I remember discussing that with him. And <clears throat> so, this is a film that has come out and, you know, it's getting critical acclaim and all that. Uh, and you're getting a call from a stranger who, from Chennai who's saying, hey, I had an issue with that point. <laughs> Why did you have to do it that way? So there you decide whether you will stay friends with this person or not because of the response you will get. So I, I, I know what he replied and I, I know how he accommodated what I said. Uh, so it sort of stemmed from there, you know. So, and you don't decide friendship and all, no. You know when it works and when it stays. I've always bounced my ideas off him and he usually bounces his ideas off me and uh, right from Kirikpati. Yeah, yeah. In fact, Kirikpati, first half, first cut, I think I was the first to see. Yeah. And Raja Shrinagar house. Uh, then second cut, then... So, Kirikpati, every time I wrote a scene, I used to call him and I used to, uh, you know, uh, explain ah, him this, this the scene. The, his, his was the first reaction when I, you know, which, which I always got. While but, but but. When you are sending something that you captured from the monitor to him or when you are discussing scenes, what if the feedback is not favourable? No, that also we give. Yeah. I have told him, what are you thinking? He has also told me, I think the last one you mentioned was better. I don't think you should make your character do this. I, which is why you try to bounce, no? Right. Otherwise, in your head, you know, you are the best writer of the world. <laughs> so. But when you hear only, but ultimately, Either of us, ultimately we decide, no, it's okay, I'll make it work. But I, I, I always like to take an opinion. Right. So, I like it, just to come back to your question and why him at this point, yeah. what is it about Raj? Right. I like it that you give back to the industry. Mm. It's something that uh, I have looked up and learned from somebody that I regard as the biggest inspiration in my life, Kamala's. You give back to the industry. Sometimes you hit, sometimes you miss. But what you give back, it comes back to you, you know, it's very simple. So, for that reason, there is no, um, <clears throat> there is no fall for certain people because you give back. It's temporary. If something misses also, it comes back. I, I know how he works with his team. I know who are all lined up to do films and uh, I've actually closely associated with a few of his assistants. I've read their scripts, they've read mine. So, I know the ecosystem how around him how it works others might have nicer ones also but you can belong to limited set of ecosystems and i'm very happy belonging to this one so right and and now coming to sai Palvi's performance career the way she conducts herself all of that um anything that you sort of take away from <coughs> that i think the the you know the clarity of thought uh, she has and probably the way she thinks uh, I've told her that, uh, you know, uh, some, somewhere, uh, you know, when she, when she's saying something, for some reason I, I sort of know what she's thinking inside, you know, when she's saying it. Uh -huh. That's because uh, whatever she's saying is, uh, it, 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 it relates to the way I think also sometimes. So, uh, that's, that's some, that, that's, that's the reason probably I, uh, you know, in a way connect uh, with her.
I know how I am uh, during few interviews. So, uh, and I know that you know why I am saying few things. I uh, I know what's running in my uh, in my head, and that's for some reason that's you know that's what I see in her also. Uh, but otherwise, yeah. So yeah, her her clarity of thought, the way she thinks, and uh, the way she obviously conducts herself everywhere, and. Uh, um, so, I've been a huge fan of uh, you know uh, her when I watched Premam, hmm. and uh, when we were doing Kirik party, we uh, you no know, one thing we were sure of was that you know people have to fall in love with Sanmi because that's what worked in Premam. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we designed that character in uh, in such a way that you know people fall in lo love with that character. And uh, when we were trying to, you know, find whom to cast, so Rishabh was like, you know, oh, let's let's call Sai Pallavi. I was like, dude, people are not ready to invest one and a half CR on me here. <laughs> Our budget is three CR. You want to call Sai Pallavi? <laughs> and so, uh, so that's how. But after that, I've, for the last six years, I've not watched too many films. Um, I think after after Kirik Party, and I started writing uh, ASN. And uh, you know, I wanted to, or until I finished Charlie also, I hardly watched like you know ten films probably, mm. if if I count. Mm. Uh, so I've not watched uh, many films after that. No, he's not watched any of my films after Premo. <laughs> <laughs> Get to that. And he's only watched Gargi. No, so Gargi. I, I think like to his, you know, second film. To, to his defense, he doesn't want to watch a lot of other language movies as well. Yeah, as well. Yeah. So you should have done a Kannada films. <laughs> yeah, you have not done a Kannada film. <laughs> she <Right>. has now. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. But uh, I, I had two friends who actually was so ecstatic when I said. So is going to be doing the film. Right. One is a friend from Chennai and the other is him. This is the end of the Mutual Admiration Society. Now, <laughs> the second time you are saying that. Oh, 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 that was the beginning, this is the end. Okay, final. Uh, now, getting on to some uh, other questions. We were just talking about Premam. So, if we have to go further back, um, what was Sai Palavi like? The Sai Palavi who did Kasturi Man, Dham Doom mm. uh, with Kangana. And also, I saw that yeah, you know, you, you modeled for a nutrition drink or something like that, uh, right? So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, what was that Sai Pallavi like? The Dam Dum face was something, I think I was in my sixth grade. I wanted to cl uh, cut uh, um, maths class and someone, I, I used to dance a lot. So, you know, generally dance, uh, schools pick up on girls who perform well and uh, they, I think, I don't know uh, whether it is right, I don't know, but it used to go around into the industry and they'll want actors maybe. So someone had asked um, uh, a person who was in Kwambuto back then and I used to uh, go and perform for those, uh, the dance school. So he had asked me if, he had asked Mama if I was ready to, you know, play a part. I said, no, no, I want to do it because it's maths test tomorrow and I'd like to go and do that. So that's how it was just, I think, one day's work and I did that. So it was to cut. Uh, uh, the class and apparently uh, the director sir, Jeeva. So he had told my mum that uh, I think she might get into uh, movies and my mum was thinking oh, she's into dance and then I know she wants to do medicine. I don't see this happening. So after I did Premam, mummy told me that Jeeva sir was the first person to say that you know I have a feeling this girl might start acting. Okay. So uh, yeah, so since then I think until Prem, even when Premam happened I only thought that uh, you know, first I thought it was a random prank call someone was asking me. Who would call someone who is in Georgia and expect them to act? So, um, I never thought of acting as a career or I, I didn't know it was possible because I, whomever I had seen, um, say uh, Simran or uh, Jyotika I and all of them, I had only seen them as those, uh, I think you need to be <laughs> born a certain way to be actor. So, I didn't know that I would be an actor. So, that's not something that you dream or you know it's possible. When I was doing medicine, I didn't think that I was going to choose this as a, a career choice or something that I was passionate about. But once I did Premam, and when I did Premam, I thought even if it didn't do well, my friends won't know because they're all Tamil. So, I, I think I can get away with it. So, after the film, while shooting, I realized that I was passionate about this and how did I not do this. But I wanted to finish medicine and then come in. Right now, I, I don't know what... Uh, I, 
movies and my personal life they have a huge uh, i think they are interlinked i become a different person i've started observing a lot of things around me and inside myself also after i've come into movies and the way i uh, the characters and how i approach and their lives so as i play them i get to know more about myself so it is just not like a, a hobby or a, something that i'm passionate about i think it's beyond that i'm getting to know more about myself and uh, so i don't know what what kind of a person i would have been if i wasn't in the uh, no lovely because that was part b of my question which would have been what is acting to you now mm -hmm. but now that you've sort of answered that question what is it that you discovered about yourself or life in itself through gargi it's not uh, through gargi you mm -hmm. mean um without having to disclose much about the film uh i i'm a person who is uh, who forgets very soon you uh, say trauma or uh, heartbreak or pain i think i have this defense mechanism where i try to forget it so that it doesn't bother me anymore so when i play characters which are uh, beyond my understanding and uh, my way of processing uh, things and having mm. to accept that it becomes very traumatic for me it is like a fight within myself to be this other character so every time i think i get stronger and i know a different life that i haven't lived this is some person that i don't think i would ever be i always forget and if right now you hurt me tomorrow you meet me i won't even make you feel that i'm aware of it you know i'll pretend like hey, nothing happened we just meeting today this is so that and that's I your defense exist. mechanism that is how yeah that's my defense mechanism in real life that's how i am if someone is that's done 100% true is Nobody could have put it in any better words. Listen, it's a pretense, or uh, no, you actually forget it. No, it is real. It is real. I I will not uh, remember. No, it but is real. No, yeah. But his, so, I like his question. So that act of yours of not showing it to the other person. Yeah. Uh, that happens in real, but is it a pretense or no, it is, is that it, how we have no, mold? That, you're not getting it. No, that's no, how no, I've it's been. It's become sec second nature to her. Right. Yeah, I've Done become that so person that over time. I think since childhood, I I think. I've seen her do that. It's definitely not pretense. Uh, Both uh, fifth grade. I think since then, I think that I've um, if something's hurt me, if something's uncomfortable, I don't want to hurt the other person. I'll start forgetting. And right now, I don't remember. most of the things that's gone wrong in my life it's because i've moved past it so tomorrow in a way it is bad because it's like but i'm giving the person a second chance to hurt me but at the same time that's not completion for you as well right it's not uh, you're right uh, it's not it's it's not but when roles like this come my way and you know you're um, you have to confront a side of yours that you haven't done before it that's why i said most of the roles that i play or the scripts that i read they are in a way uh, they put me in spots that i don't want to be easily i get out of them in real life but right now i've been put uh, in a situation how do you battle this? with logic in such a scenario because you are not able to see why that person is functioning that way the character that you are going to approach so how do you work logic i'm a out? very emotional being i go with emotions i believe uh, emotions can drive you from this extent to that extent in in no time so there's no logic when it comes to emo, uh, in, emotions and yeah. i function like that in real life and when the the, <coughs> the roles i approach i think that's how when when i say gargi wouldn't do something like this i know her tune i know the mm. place that she's coming from i'm emotionally connected to her i don't think logically this is what a girl in that place should do no but instead huh. gargi having this type of a uh, upbringing. Um, yeah upbringing her surrounding everything makes you the person you are my upbringing and my life has made me this person Correct. that i am so gargi has a past to herself she is being brought up a certain way she has a different way in which she looks at life so she would only think this way so there you only have an emotional connect and how you take things forward and you are fully convinced about that about that's, that's how i uh, so this is a two way thing one is i believe this and i emote it if it does not convince the person who is watching it over there the director isn't convinced with what i'm delivering and if he thinks that mm. it isn't coming across then i will have to work around it and get it through uh, in a way that is convincing enough so it is always it is never that i am sure of what i'm doing and i go this way because sometimes it's important uh, you know when uh, you take 10 minutes to do a particular emotion but you have the cry, uh, the restriction of time so you will have to crush it in and do a lot of things so when such things happen i think he's come forward and said i'd like the second uh, you know not the developing expression i'd like the second one from there we can still do it so 
Yeah. Let's say there's a particular style of dance, mm -hmm. right? And uh, because you had mentioned this in one of your earlier interviews, I think it was in Georgia, where you took to a particular style of dance ha, ha. and then uh, people only looked at the costume and not yeah, the yeah, artistic yeah. side of it, right? Now, does that put you in a spot of embarrassment? And if yes, then at the same time, for instance, let's say um, somebody is not very confident of, of uh, laughing. Mm -hmm. in, in, in front of the camera, right? And they've been given that scene where they're going to burst out into laughter and all of that. And they're already pretty nervous about it. They don't know how to deliver. And then, because laughing is very difficult, right? Yeah, yeah. And then that is one place where you can completely expose yourself. Yeah, yeah. So how does one deal with fear of embarrassment? Like you have a set of I, like... Um I cannot talk for everybody, but I, how I might, if I was in a situation where I had to do something, uh, say, like laughing and I know I'm going to make a fool of myself, usually I, once I'm in front of the camera and someone calls action, I actually forget uh, the world around me. I don't know if it's believable, uh, even when it comes to dancing. Um, sometimes I don't even see the person I'm dancing with. It's just that it's another form of mind that's dancing with me which is uh, jiving with me. So I'm never able to look at beings, but I see a very different form that I've created and that's doing something with me. So I'm, uh, because that is always there, there is no room for me to be embarrassed because it's just me all around. So I look at it in that way. And uh, Because you answered another question I had, which I sort of took it out from the list finally, because the other question I had was, uh, having watched Gargi, I'm like, regardless of who the, uh, uh, the the uh, the male partner is immediately I'm able to see the uh, connection between Gargi and Parni mm, mm. and I'm thinking like okay um, I don't know that actor I don't know that actor mm. so uh, and Sai Pali is this big actor and all of that now how is she getting this connect with every single you do a film with Nani you do a film with yeah. Fahad and then you're doing it with uh, this gentleman who's playing Parni and I'm believing that the both of you are uh, a couple, a, a couple. Yeah. and and I think the answer that I'm going to take back for that is that you it doesn't matter to you. Yeah, I'm you romancing are... myself. It's just <laughs> another part of me, the male counterpart. Maybe. By the way, that that was a single pick, huh. the one that they two. Yeah. For many reasons, it was 5 for 55. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you saying many reasons like I was the reason? But the please. way they... Yeah, yeah. But the, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, 5 55 is no, normally the biggest... Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just single take. Yeah. They both came. They bounced off each other's energies. He also good and she... And, and what is that gentleman's name? Kalish. Kalish. Kalish is okay. his name. But she was right when she said... Um, the other person... And if you see there track in the film, it starts halfway. Right. Lot of the things in the film I started halfway. So we had to write this entry point organically. So you know that they've had a history. Only then chemistry will work. So luckily it was um, uh, very... But at the same time for the actor it is double higher pressure. The, double the work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're starting midway. Yeah, yeah. It's double the work. Uh, but uh, they would do you know, uh, uh, some amount of rehearsing, then picking up uh, these situations from your own life. She does a lot of that. Like, a lot of things is like, this is what I would do to my sister. This is how I would yell at my sister. So you just have to give her a scene. The one where she reprimands her sister. The, the a lot of words that came in the dialogue, uh, in that scene, reactions. And she turns around and, you know, tries to get her mother's support. Look right. at my sister, she's always doing this. Right. All that is on the spot. It was not uh, doctored in. I just had to tell her the gist. So this is the gist of my dialogues, you know. Um, you play around with it and it was live sound. So so whatever comes is magic for me. The blocking as well, like... I have... Blocking is since I was working with multiple... You mean the visual blocking? Yes. Yeah, yeah. We were mul working with multiple cameras, no? No, so, when to turn and all of that, when to turn, where to walk, where to take a... I had a lot of freedom when it came yeah, to yeah. that. Uh, yeah. Because there was one point at which, you know, uh, now that uh, 
I'll shut the door, I'll sit down and I'll go down. That was something that I couldn't stand up. I just wanted to break down. Yeah. You know, after a hard day, you just want to, okay, rest. So I did that. <laughs> I could, in the periphery, I could see that the cameras were also like, okay, what is she doing right now? We, we got to get that. Technicians as well. Yeah, so. So when she went down, that scene was not written like that at all. But when it happened, you know that this is the best way that it should have happened. What is your first reaction when you see that? Are you, uh, is it that Nan he can not lay well a camera man capture Martha or Ilvo Atwa? No, no, no. By then, my is... DOP and all was used to it. Okay. Move everywhere. Yeah, no, no. With me, I think it was so nice that when I did this, they also yeah, came and they yeah. were always uh, so agile. They were that so, my DOP yeah. was a girl. It's, it was a duo, a girl and a boy. That girl was in tune with the script. Yeah, yeah. Surroundings, Shrainti and Shrainti and, and Prem. Gifted technicians, gifted cinematographers. Even the courtroom scene where... They come from a non-fiction cinematography background, having covered documentaries and all that. And I wanted that treatment for the film, where you just observe things. No fly-on-the-wall treatment. So the way she would gel with her moments, that scene where what she's referring to, she comes, hides, goes down, feels bad, immediately recollects, stands up and goes back in. Which is not... I think is you, you come, you feel bad, then you tell your mother, I'm sorry I yelled at you, but this is what has happened. But it, it was uh, what she brings when she is into the character and she doesn't care about the other artist. She only cares that that is my mother Kokila, this is my sister Akshara. That liberty she takes and, uh, and we had a few sessions with the actors. So they all knew what to give back and not to stand. Oh my God, that was not right, my dialogue right, cue. Right, right, what right. Happened? And if that happened, we had multiple cameras. Right. So we could always... Uh, that way, it was lucky that a lot of the artists in the film were <coughs> uh, uh, open to the idea of capturing things as it happened. Just going one step further on how you said you approach your co-actor, it may sound stupid, but are you seeing a face at all or you're not even seeing the no, face? No, I uh, don't see a perfect, face. Perfect, perfect. Because that now, is an acceptable answer to me no, based I, on what you yeah. okay because i was also wanting to listen hear that you are not seeing a face also no, I so don't. you are completely out of focus no i just see a very uh, you know a body that I, right. I can't it's just like she's i, I get the idea I get so you see the like when, when it was indran's the advocate and all when it was these two i never corrected anything they were bouncing off each other's energy the advocate and and gargi is an interesting name uh, so, please tell us about that, if you can. Also, Indrans. Indran is common, but what is this Indrans? I had the same question. <laughs> she did, is it yeah. why plural? Why Indrans? Indrans, why plural? There is some big story. He is not, I mean, he is, there is... How, how, how trying to edit it. Yeah, how to put it there. Should, it I, should I talk about oh, it? Yeah. So, <laughs> in fact, few people would ask me when, once they read Indrans, there's a Malayalam actor called Indrans, who's a national award winning actor. They said, Oh, is that why you named him Indrans? I'd say yes. I said, Okay, you be happy with that answer. I'm going to say yes. But the truth is, nomenclature for all the characters are based on a mythological reason. Even for in all. Yeah. Okay. okay. What they would possibly uh, represent in somebody's life. Uh, is 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 why we've named them so and so. The only person that I named out of free will was uh, uh, Gargi's mother's character. That was just, hey, that sounds good. Let's oh. name her that. Then, but everybody, including the cop who comes in, is a homage to an incident that I can't talk much about right now, pre-release. Mm, but. It's a uh, it's a homage to an incident that actually triggered the whole country. We actually came up with a new law because of that incident, mm -hmm. ha something that happened in I think uh, uh, 1999. So, so that name is half of that name is a tribute to a victim of that incident, and the other half of the name is a is a tribute to a victim of another incident that happened in the beginning of the lockdown. Uh, so and so with Gargi, with the name of the victim. Uh, with Palani as well. Because if no, you're talking about yeah, not so much. Yeah, no, not okay. so much Palami. Uh, Palami was just a vehement attempt to uh, keep the love story 
a very chennai based love story ha ah. so that's why he was calling but the victim and the protagonist the protagonist father the cop uh the lawyer were all named primary characters basically right. were named and what i liked was not in the obvious way yeah yeah, yeah. some of them unless i tell the story five times i don't think they'll understand it's just one or surya sir actually got one of them like that mm. Mm. Uh, maybe because somebody had narrated something to him or something like that but he got one thing here and there couple of people have got is that why you name that thing? because it's not a first reference it's like i know you through him through them then remember that other guy you met who was his driver so it's the last person so yeah. some were able to otherwise uh, how much of a kick does it give a writer or a director when you drop stuff like that big time when you have easter eggs and uh-huh. um naming people that only <laughs> i don't know you know you will know or you are obsessed with or a, i know i like his thing with karna dharma right. all that is that he brings Correct. to the character Correct. and you love your own reasons could be cliche reasons it could be personal reasons as to why you want to or it could mean a lot to the story so i love it Uh, I mean, I loved when it when I did it in Udaipur. There were the five elements, uh, right. I think. Yeah, yeah. And I am doing it even more in Richard Anthony. Uh, I I think that is so that that's something which I normally go and discuss with my uh, writers as well. Like when I when I crack something like that, more than you know, a good writing a good scene, <laughs> uh, you know, the philosophy yeah. what I bring in, uh, which probably. you know people won't even bother to understand or uh, and adu nimage matter agala anusuttara nan matter agala yakandre nimage sigbekagiro ond artistic high sikbidide avu hold hold and maja en antandre when you're watching the, when you're watching the film you are enjoying the story everything is you know okay. all set and done and then people will start talking about the rest of the things yeah and the, you know uh, any film can become a cult only when you know people talk about it even after 5 5 6 years the the intricacies intricacies what you know the writers have uh, hidden here and there it is from you that i learned uh, quite a bit about the role of a presenter right you said there are multiple ways a presenter can get associated to a film what sort of an association is it for you as the presenter of gargi in kannada with gargi like what sort of a presenter are you uh, actually can i start yeah, sure. that before he sure. starts yes. yes. uh he knew of the plot once he asked me karnal martiya anta i said nan i'll start maadibutta hmm. i think it was just a, something he dropped il martiya andre helu maadibuda na or something i said illa nan all maadta idini then uh, it was another artist then another artist then uh, i said no i want to do it with illi bere avaru jothe bere avaru jothe sai palvi jothe alla bere avaru jothe ar innu freeze agilla yaro anta innu freeze agilla ha ondu address ritto production no ಅದನ್ನು ಮಾಡಿ ಈ ರೋಲ್ಗೆ ಅವ್ನು ಬರಬೇಕು ಅದು ಇದು ಅಂತ ಸಿಕ್ಕ ಮಾಡಿ ನೈಸ್ ಟು ಟೆಲ್ ಇನ್ ತಲೆ ಕೆಡ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಗುರು ಇದಕ್ಕೆ ಅವ್ರು ಐ ನಾಟ್ ದಟ್ ಐಮ್ ಅಗೇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಎನಿ ಆಕ್ಟರ್ ಆರ್ ಎನಿ ಶಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟೂಟ್ ಐ ಸೆಟ್ ಯು ನೀಡ್ ಟು ನೋ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಟ್ ಯು ಕಾಂಟ್ ಯು ಕಾಂಟ್ ಬಿಲ್ಡ್ ಎ ಹೋಟೆಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಸಿ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಮೇಕ್ ಇಟ್ ಅ ಯು ನೋ ಸ್ಕೂಲ್ ಆರ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಯೂಸ್ ಟು ಕೀಪ್ ಟೆಲಿಂಗ್ ದೆನ್ ಆಟ್ ಒನ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಐ ಸೆಟ್ ಇಲ್ಲ ಮಗ ನಾನು ಓನಾಗೆ ಮಾಡೋಣ ಅಂತಿದ್ದೀನಿ ಐ ಸೆಟ್ ಮಾಡು ಐ ಸೆಟ್ ಐ ಸೆಟ್ ಮಾಡು ಏನಾದಿದ್ರೆ ನಾನು ನಾನು ಇರ್ತೀನಿ ಹಾಫ್ ವೇ ತ್ರೂ ದ ಪ್ಲಾನಿಂಗ್ at one point i wanted him to come on board nan alli tanka kathe helilla ayur bandirod on board helaitu excited adru excited adru i said good in chanag barutte no one point i called and said uh, i need x amount of money starting uh, next schedule that's all i asked hmm. so uh, even before the presenter thing came on board that is how he has been associated with uh, ಆ ಕೇಳಿದ ಟೈಮಲ್ಲಿ ಹಿ ವುಡ್ ಸೇ ಯು ವುಡ್ ಗೋಟ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಈ ಡೇ ಈ ಡೇಟ್ಗೆ ಈ ಅಮೌಂಟ್ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಆ ಡೇಟ್ಗೆ ಆ ಅಮೌಂಟ್ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಐ ಐ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಹ್ಯೂಜ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ಡೆಪ್ಟೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ಫುಲ್ ಟು ಹಿಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎ ಕಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಅದರ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಹೂ ಸೊ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಅದು ಅದಾದ ಮೇಲೆ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ನಾವು ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಒಂದೇ ನಿಮಿಷ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಮುಂಚೆ ಅಂಡ್ ಇಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಸೇ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಕಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ನೀವೇ ಒಂದು ಡೀಲ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರಿ i am i am doing a big <laughs> one big deal there so i need to adjust something uh, here so i uh, i thought i could do it and uh, i normally don't bother about money in the sense uh, for some reason 
whenever I wanted something, you know, it was ready. Uh, so I don't break my head there. I only, you know, concentrate on my uh, work. And and anyways, this this had happened. And uh, so when uh, the releasing plan in Canada was not there. Yeah, uh, yeah but, it was not there. Huh. Tamil and Telugu was the problem. Uh, so, I think, when did we decide it? Ah, uh, Russia was not there. No, no, Also, I was releasing my film, uh, Charlie, in other languages. So, uh, I personally believe that it's my duty to, you know, get other, other films also and release, release it here. And especially, I think, this industry needs, needs that because uh, the parallel cinema front, what is running in Canada uh, film industry, right now, we don't have enough filmmakers. Uh, you know, we need at least 10 to 15 films to keep this audience, uh, you know, busy. We need to cater them every now and then. Otherwise, you know, at least you have to work at least you have to work So that the audience, uh, uh, you know, they should be used to, uh, you know, come to theatres and... and Theatre is not going to be able to do it. And uh, right now there are hardly five, six filmmakers who are, uh, you know, working on this front. Uh, who I trust, like, you know, I'm not going to be able to do it. So, Athra trusts you want to be able to do it. So, we have to do this in the cinema actually. Uh, you know, Kannada will release Aakta Irubeko, so that churning Aakta Irubeko cinema, in the cinema. And I think that when I release the cinema, Charlie, I will release the cinema. So, when I release the cinema, I will release the cinema. 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 Balancing it. Balancing it uh, out. Also, obviously, you know, uh, uh, Gautam being a friend, all that also uh, matters. And you know, as I said, uh, Sai Pallavi being there like, in the film. Uh, this is like, he's just throwing me a bone. He's like, oh, finally I got to. I can't leave her out. Come on, that's okay. <laughs> so, sitting in the middle, let us. Yeah, I have to say something right now. So I, so I had few reasons until yesterday. I think after watching the film yesterday, I have a thousand more reasons to mm. present mm. it. I'm not sure of the concept of mastery as such. I don't know if I even believe in it. But at the same time, I believe that every artist, be it a dancer or an actor, in your case, um, at some point you would have found that voice or your own, uh, you know, style, or you would have clicked with that particular art, right? Be it um, dancing or acting, and then uh, you would have sort of found a union with it. When did that happen to you with dancing and when has it happened to you with acting? With dancing, um, I think when like I Like you and your child, art are one yeah, at that point. Yeah, yeah. I, when it comes to dancing, I think I've been dancing for a very long time. I, I don't know, <laughs> I think from the time I was born maybe. And I think I said this in another interview, but my mum... I recently told me after I think Sham Singh Roy released, she said um, when she was pregnant with me in her belly, uh, apparently she would dance a lot. She said, I'm not a dancer, but after I was pregnant with you in my belly, I was dancing a lot. So I realized that this kid that I have in my body from a previous birth is carrying the, uh, the dancer element in her. So be it a boy or a girl, I think she's going to dance. So I remember the first time that I was dancing around, you know, parents generally ask you to dance at weddings and people's uh, grav pravesham and all of that. So I remember uh, dancing happily and she picked that and um, she made me go to two competitions. So the first competition I went to, I had this boy cut and I don't have long hair. So she had put this dupatan clips on my hair. Uh -huh. Midway Sorry. as I was dancing that came off and you know, sometimes you feel embarrassed when a part of your costume comes off. I remember walking down and crying, saying this happened to me. So the first competition I, I ever remember, I lost. It's not about losing. I felt so bad that the headdress came off and I had a boy cut and I'm dancing like a girl. But after that, she said one thing saying, Pallavi, you have to dance for your happiness. You dance at home your and you're so said happy. That. Mommy said this. She said, you're dancing for your happiness. If you go on talk for and you dance for someone's, uh, say for their happiness or for something that they want, I don't think you can ever get to that point where you'll be able to give them that happiness. You dance happily, they'll get happiness mm. from watching you dance. So from then, whether I do it right or wrong, 
I will be so happy when I dance. At one point, dance started giving me happiness and an emotion that I don't think anything else gave me. You know, sometimes you go into a trance where um, usually you um, forget, uh, um, I don't know, maybe in Sufism they have that thing where it's a form of dance where you're physically and also it, it elevates you to another. Uh, recently I watched Elvis. I think when he sang, I saw a visual where he felt a little elevated, enlightened or it takes you yeah. to another right. uh, plane. Right. So I think that is how I look at dance. I feel like I'm elevated to another plane, which I don't think anybody other than me will understand. Is the it joy. any time you dance or only a few times? Uh, no, no, only a few times and I know, uh, you know, you start crying when you dance. Ah. Imagine when that happens, you're dancing, you're so happy mm. and you start crying. Mm. Not that you're doing great steps, mm. but it right. makes you feel a certain way that you cannot describe. And tears are the only way, uh, you know, in which you're able to express and you don't have to have an audience to, uh, uh, you know, give you that feeling that, hey, this is something, it's just so personal. So, um, this is how I feel about dancing and when it comes to movies i think since my childhood anytime i've watched a film i've always put myself in that place and i've cried right now if we both are talking and you tell me something you start tearing up or if you choke i'll cry before you uh, because i will be able to feel the pain mm. that you're pay, uh, you're feeling a while ago you mentioned that oh okay this was hard i'm going to choke uh -huh. my eyes were tearing up and i'm thinking well we don't cry before he does <laughs> so it's up to that level that I think I uh, immediately mirror the other person and I feel very emotional. So when I play characters that I do, I no longer see uh, the difference. And it again, um, if you're asking how whether I feel elevated, whether I feel a different mood, I think that happens only when I'm, um, I realize that only after I'm done with the film and what it's left me with. Not during the process. So because, long after. Yeah, only that's after it, it, it kind of lingers in you and you realize, okay, is this what? Because until then, I'll be that person, I won't be able to cut off. It's only after that that I'll realize that. So during dance, it's during the process, but when it comes to movies, it's after I'm uh, done with it that I can feel that. Excellent, envy. excellent. And um, have you arrived at a phase where you like acting as much as you like dancing? I think so, because both of them teach me more about myself. They make me feel things that I'm uh, unaware of. And uh, so I, I think both, but I'm going to side a little with dance <laughs> because I can I, dance I'm when I'm alone. I'm happy with that. Uh, anyway, no, I, I, have I can dance when I'm alone, but I can't just act <laughs> to myself. And I like it when people, um, uh, even if people don't uh, watch me dancing, I know dancing is all mine. I can go home and dance and I can cry and I can emote. But I think acting, I like it when people uh, uh, pass their <coughs> comments whether they like it or not. It's more like a collaborative thing, you know, right. I, like how an artist in me lives because of uh, the love that they share and all that. So I think uh, movies are more uh, a two-way thing, but dance is all mine. <laughs> what did you discover about Kannada while you were dubbing for this film? My voice sounded so different. I've never heard my voice that way. I kept telling him when I speak those words. Uh, I've always heard my voice say voice notes. So when you watch movies, this sounds very different to an extent where I, I, at one point, I won't know if it was my voice or if it was someone else's voice when they give me a playback. So, um, and the words uh, are beautiful in Telugu, Muddu Gaundi. So, uh, and, but it was very challenging. I, I can't take that away. If I had done a straight Kannada film, I'm pretty sure uh, by now I would be at least able to converse to a, a decent extent. But because I only dubbed, um, the joy that I get when I speak a particular language, uh, I, I don't think I could explore that Understood. in that... Uh, it was only uh, four, four days. Four days, yeah. Four. So in four days I had to uh, like say the words for the first time and then get it right and get the diction and the tune and all of that right. So, uh, it was more like a learning process. Uh, but the only thing, to be honest, that I could, uh, that I enjoyed was knowing that, you know, sometimes when you see Meryl Streep, there are a few roles that she's done, it won't sound like her voice. Mm. You know, when she played uh, uh, the, I'm not yeah, sure, uh, no, no, there's this film, I'm sorry, I don't think I'll get the name anytime soon. Uh, in that, her voice, she had, changed it in a certain way and I would always wonder how does one 
change. You can change your slang, you can change your diction, but how do you change your voice? And I suddenly thought, hey, I did nothing, but I could <laughs> suddenly hear a different voice from there. So in that way, I had joy, but I think I'll be able to enjoy the language more when I do a straight Kannada film because I'll have more time to, uh, you know, take it in and make it my own language. And sure. Because my Telugu will not sound like anyone else's Telugu. My Tamil doesn't sound like anyone else's Telugu. I think, yeah, Tamil, yeah, yeah. I think everybody has the, a very unique way in which they speak. And I think I'll be able to explore my Kannada only when I do uh, a straight Kannada film. Right now, I've tried my best to be as perfect as possible. You'll be like, hey, <laughs> and, uh, at least up to that level, but I keep saying my Kannada only. Yeah, yeah. I'll be able to own the language when I spend more time with it. I think. First, right. first day was a little challenging. Huh. So I, I remember at the end of the day, I asked her, uh, listen, I understand if it's because it's a whole new language and you're not learning the language, you're repeating what two boys are saying. One's me and the other's <laughs> Shah. And we used to quarrel between ourselves, me and the other uh, Shan, this person. So I said, if it's difficult, I understand, we can go back and focus on things. She said, no, you should have thought about all this before bringing me here. Now I'm here, I want to do it. No, it's like so, a discomfort, you know, once you start something, you, you cannot want leave. to, I have that thing. Once I start something, either I take that decision before itself, I kept asking him, are you sure, are you sure? Once you say, I'm in. I'll do it, even if it's for 10 days, I'll do, sit day and night, I'll sit and do it. Mm. I don't like, uh, it's not like a challenge or anything. It, it's something that runs in your head thinking, hey, you know you're able to do it. It's there within. You just need a little bit push. Uh, and I had really uh, Shan and him together. Uh, they were very patient. Imagine just listening to a word and I'm repeating it. And when they say it's not the word, it's frustrating for me and them. They're like, hey, does this girl she, not she get it? She would say, no, no, that's what I'm saying. And we'll like, no, no, that's not what you say. So she will say, you say it. I'll say it once. She'll say, that's exactly what I said. <laughs> so, yeah. So it was frustrating for me and even more frustrating for someone who knew the language. So I had a good team who were patient enough to... And sort of me and Rakshita decided prior to that, that if we can get her to do it in Canada, I mean, in Friday box office, all that is up to God. But the attempt in itself, we would be so happy. Absolutely. That there was an artist who did a really personal, nice film. Uh, and sh she was fully on board to, like, are you sure, will you guys be able to do it, is what she was thinking. And when she came and, actually it's not even four days, by three and a half days she finished. And the film drives on her communication only, so uh, we we were happy when we saw what we got. Okay. So Gargi is releasing on July 15th. Uh, I loved the film, I'm, obviously Rakshit loved the film. Uh, this will she be, is dubbed for herself. She is dubbed. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was coming to that. Um, although this is coming out as a dubbed film in Canada, I think it is a must watch mm -hmm. and the uh, audience is going to love it for sure. So, my best wishes, I hope thank as you. many people as possible thank watch you. this uh, film and uh, thank you for giving me so much time. No, no, thanks. <laughs> thank you. you had very nice questions. It yeah. was more uh, you know, stimulating. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having us. <laughs>